I have another meal I want to share with you today. This time it's another low carb or ketogenic meal that is super simple to prepare in the woods and is super delicious at the same time. It is pemmican soup. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just to be clear, I did say this was an easy meal to prepare in the woods, and it is, it really is. But it does take a little bit of time to prepare at home. It's a two component meal. First, obviously, is the dehydrated vegetables. And the other piece is the pemmican block that I have here. Both do take a little bit of time, but it's time well worth spent because once you have these prepared at home, then you can put these in your, your stuff sack, your lunch bag, your food bag, whatever you have, and it can go with you. And you don't have to take it out because, and you don't have to worry about using it up because it's completely shelf stable, requires no refrigeration will last almost forever and when you're ready for a meal it's there and like I said easy to prepare. So a little bit more detail what I have here is a vacuum sealed package of a variety of vegetables that I dehydrated at home. Specifically, there is a little bit of carrot, a little bit of onion, a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of cauliflower, a little bit of green and red pepper, a little bit of green beans. Uh, yeah, okay, that's pretty much everything that's in there. And I also put in an OXO uh, bullion beef bullion package powder in there as well. Now, of course, you don't have to vacuum seal them like this. You can put them in a Ziploc bag or whatever else you want. It was just, I found that over time they start to crumble a little bit if they're jostled around a lot in my food bag. So when they're uh, vacuum sealed like that, it just keeps everything together and I don't have to worry too much about it. Now, the pemmican. The pemmican is something I've been working on for some time. And if you're interested, I will produce a video on making pemmican specifically uh, the way I like to make it. Uh, yeah, we can, we can share that another time. But this block of pemmican I made up some time ago. And uh, again, it is vacuum sealed, but it would last, because if you know anything about pemmican, it will last as long as it's kept dry and out of the sun. It can last, I think there's records of it being still edible with still nutrition after 50 to 100 years. Now, okay. I vacuum sealed mine and I tossed mine in the freezer. That should ensure that it's going to stay good for a long, long period of time. But I've, this has been in my lunch bag now for about three weeks with no deterioration. I didn't expect there would be any, but uh, yeah, okay. So in truth, this is the foundation for the meal. And I'm going to give you some nutritional breakdown on this and some weights and everything. And the vegetables provide fiber, flavor, and some enjoyment to go with it. But if I didn't have these, this would be a complete meal all by itself. Plain, you know, tasteless, palatable, but I wouldn't say reach for it as a snack. But when you combine the two of them together and any spices you want to put in with it, then you've got something. You really have a cool meal. Now, I do have a note here with a few of, of the, uh... here it is few of the macros on this for your interest sake and I will put this information in the video description underneath and uh, yeah okay so this total meal those two packages is together come out as 727 calories which is a good sized meal and it's not a full day but you know it's a good sized meal for for a mid-november afternoon 52 grams of that is fat 33 grams of it is protein and the final nine, nine grams are net carbs. Took a little bit of time to figure that out because of course everything here is dehydrated. The veggies themselves, the package of veggies weighs in at 36 grams. So you can see very, very light. That by itself has 67 net car or 67 calories, not as I mentioned, nine grams of net carbs, and there's three grams of protein in there as well. But the pemmican, of course, is the star of the show. And the pemmican is a bar that weighs in at 120 grams. So that is, well, almost four times the weight of the vegetables alone. But this is where 660 calories of my meal are going to come from. 52 grams of this are fat and 30 grams of this are protein. So all in all, it's if you break it down, about 71% of the meal, the calories are coming from fat, which is very well into the ketogenic uh, area. So it's not just a low carb meal. It is truly a ketogenic meal, a high fat meal and it tastes wonderful. All right, that's enough talk about it. Let's get some water onto a boil and I'll make it uh, in a pot here. All right, my water has come to a boil. 
Uh, the stove setup and pot setup I'm using today, by the way, is will appear in another video. video. This is a simple uh, thrift store find. It's a food strainer or colander that you would get in a in a, any kitchen store, I guess. But uh, this is something I put together. This whole cook set for very little money. So watch for that if you're interested. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is to get our vegetables into the water. It's down to about a simmer from a boil. And I've got them all here in this package. Now they do take a few minutes. So what to uh, rehydrate that is. So what I like to do before I add anything else is just to give the vegetables some time in the water to rehydrate. Now I did call this a soup, but it could be a stew just as easily as a soup. It's a matter, I think in this case, it's a matter of the thickness, how much water and uh, stock will be in it by the time we, uh, you know, are prepared to eat it. Okay, that does take a few minutes, and the reason I'm doing these separate, of course, is that if I put in the pemmican now, the fat that's in the pemmican will prevent, or at least make it much harder for the vegetables to absorb water. I am going to put in my beef stock, though, and that may as well start soaking right into the vegetables now. Give that a stir in. So this might take even 10 minutes. Do make sure that you do this over relatively low heat because if uh, this gets too hot, of course you could end up burning it and having it stick to the bottom of your pie. So all I'm gonna do is let this come to a, uh, a simmer for a while and you can see the vegetables are already starting to soften up. Did I say there was broccoli in this? By the way, there's broccoli in this, I can see it now. Yeah, see the mushrooms, the broccoli, Mushrooms, carrots, all low-carb vegetables. People might question the carrots. Uh, just very few shreds of carrots in there right now. I've had people, of course, question uh, the red and green peppers because they can be inflammatory for some people. But And I guess the point is, they're not for me. Uh, if they were, I wouldn't be using them. If they are for you, don't use them. It's just that simple. Use whatever vegetables you want and dehydrate whatever you want to prepare a meal like this. Okay, so I need to give this about 10 minutes or so. I'll check the vegetables. I'll come back when it's time to add our pemmican. So it's been uh, about 10 minutes. Add a fuel a few times. Check the vegetables. They're quite soft now, quite tasty all by themselves. I had to add a little bit more water. You can see the vegetables all rehydrating nicely. I did have to add a little bit more water because those vegetables are taking up much more space than you would think. But they're, or they're rehydrated enough now to add the pemmican to it. So, okay, I am not sure I'm going to add this whole bar of pemmican. Like I said, it's 660 calories for the whole thing. But uh, oh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to start with about half of the bar. And all I have to do is break it up and drop it in just to let you know what it tastes like. Not bad. Okay, so the pemmican that I make has no spices in it. It is just the tallow and the meat. I don't add any spices, any salt, or anything else for one very simple reason. I'm not sure what it's going to be made with or what it's going to be turned into when I make it. And I don't want to mix up flavors that won't go well with whatever I'm cooking. So, make it plain. That's my recommendation. Make it plain. Get a glove on for this. And then you can spice up your meal once it's in the pot. Actually, I think I will add all of that pemmican. So you can eat this just like I am. I've been snacking on this right out of the uh, bag that I had it in, but I think it's much better when it's added to a meal. Picks up the flavors, adds all that nice fat, protein. I'm beginning to believe that pemmican is the uh, ideal hiking food for people on a low carb or a ketogenic diet. Now, tallow will, has to go at least 100 degrees before it starts to melt. 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that is. 
And then the beef inside has to rehydrate some as well, but it's starting to already. So that's going to take a few minutes to really rehydrate, melt down, mix in with everything else. But I think I can probably throw in a few spices on top of that even as we're talking. Take out my little spice pack. Two spices. Garlic. Pretty much always garlic. And some Cajun spices. And maybe a little salt. Okay, all there is now is to wait a few more minutes until that's rehydrated and we'll come back for the taste test. All right, the taste test. As you can see, I'm eating right out of my cooking pot. No bowl. All right. Yeah, everything looks wonderful. Now, mixing the pemmican through, some of the beef is a little clumpy, but there are no big chunks. When I say a little clumpy, that's, uh, yeah, I guess that's the best way to describe it. Let's see. Open your see some of the vegetables and mushrooms. Hot. Hmm. Okay, so the uh, pemmican did dissolve completely. It did mix in well with all of the vegetables and the beef stock, and that OXO beef stock I put in here. The, there is still some texture, I think, from the dried beef that, if I leave it a little longer, would rehydrate further. It's nothing that I would say is unpalatable. Actually, it might be something else that's in there. It may not be the beef at all. You can see the vegetables and everything. Once again, there's some of the beef on the end of the spoon there. Mm. Oh, that was, that was just marvelous. So here's the thing. People, a lot of people, not, not everybody, those who know, know. A lot of people feel that pemmican is going to be the worst tasting thing possible. I mean, it's just ground beef and fat, right? Well, that's true. It is just ground beef and fat, but it is anything but bad tasting. It all depends on how you make it. Um, I will do a video, as I mentioned, if you're interested in making pemmican, but if it's done correctly using the right fat, and that's the key word here, using the correct fats, and preparing everything properly, then you should come up with something that has very smooth texture and almost no flavor at all until it's rehydrated and you add some spices. So once again, the tallow really doesn't add any flavor if it's properly made tallow. The beef will add flavor for sure and you add spices on our beef stock or whatever else you want to add on top of that to get the uh, uh, to get the flavors you want. I was just looking to see if there is fat floating around on top of this, as you might think from when you melt a big chunk of tallow like that. And I don't see it. There's not like any big globs of fat on top of the surface. I guess it must have been absorbed nicely by the, all the vegetables and everything. Can you see that? Look at that. Beans, broccoli, some onion, some beef in there, a little bit of carrot. Mm, and a whole lot of flavor. I didn't overdo it with the salt. I didn't overdo it with the garlic. I didn't overdo it with the, uh, the Cajun spices. I probably could have added a bit more. But <laughs> I'm happy. Like this is a, a meal, a real meal. It tastes good. It you know feels good in the mouth. And with 770 some calories, I believe it was, I think it's probably you know a very nutritious meal. Okay, I hope this is shorter than I expect this video to be. I didn't want to make this too long because it's such a simple thing to do. Uh, I, as I mentioned, I'll put all the ingredients and the macros in the video description below if you're interested in trying your, this yourself. Also, if you're interested, there's two videos that could come out of this. One in, on how to dehydrate or how I dehydrate anyway. And the other one, of course, is the making of the pemmican. 
If you have any comments on this meal itself, or on making the pemmican, or on dehydrating the vehicle of uh, vegetables, or on any other meals you'd like to see me try and make out here in the woods, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.